Anybody listening? I do believe we are officially uh, live. If you are joining us this evening, could you, just before we get started here, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Uh, oh, hey, somebody got your jeans there. Uh, oh, Jimmy, cool. it was awesome. Uh, nice. If you give us a thumbs up that you can hear our audio, just do a quick mm -hmm. check. Um, Howard, just want to say hello or something sure. like that? Sure, hello, everyone. Okay, uh, just if you could, in the yep. comments, just make sure you can hear us all, and we're going to get started in about uh, two seconds. We got about 150 people live with us. Um, awesome, we got the thumbs up, so we are good to go loud and clear. Thank you uh, very much. My name is Adam Price, and I'm kind of putting this together on Jimmy's channel. He's been a friend and a business partner for the last about three years or so, yeah. and we are going to Run be quick. talking about... yeah. yeah uh, we are going to be talking about the road to retail, uh, and mostly I'm going to be facilitating. Um, Jimmy is going to be sharing his story along with Howard, his business partner. Um, um, but before we do that, we just want to welcome each one of you here as you're watching live. Uh, if you have a question at any point, please put it in, um, and we will, if it's relevant and it's um, something that is um we feel would be value to the audience watching. We'll just add you right in uh, and it'll just kind of come in like this. And you'll see uh, if you put a comment in there, you can see uh, Martin. Hello, everybody. Um, Hello, and Martin. Then we'll, we'll address. Yeah, Martin. Welcome. And then we'll address that comment. Uh, so if you have a comment, <clears throat> by all means, or a question, ask it. And Jimmy and Howard will uh, do their best <clears throat> for sure to answer it. And I'll just give you a quick idea of myself and then let obviously the star of the show uh, take it away. And uh, my name is Adam Price. Like I said, I've been working with Jimmy for about three years. I'm part of the Makers Mob where we first got started. And then I helped working behind the scenes uh, with his website and a couple of our opportunities that have come up that we'll be talking about shortly. I'm up in Canada on mm -hmm. Vancouver Island. And um, yeah, so maybe J Jimmy, I'm sure you don't need yeah. much introduction, but why don't you hit it, man? And then we'll, yeah. we'll let Howard have a run out of here. Well, um, Howard, Howard is my business partner. Uh, and I always jokingly say, Howard, remember years ago when you said, I want to help you not spend all your money. I said, I want to help you have some sort of retirement plan. How can I help? And I said to you, well, you and I were friends and you actually had a YouTube channel for a couple of minutes there talking about just like, uh, you know, basic business practices. Yeah. We, we could link it if we could remember the name of it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you put up about 10 videos. And um, but uh, Howard, Howard came to me and said, how can I help you uh, with your business? And I said, well, my website is faltering. I don't know what to do with it. You know, we're selling hats and shirts and sometimes we sell ice picks. And anyway, Howard behind the scenes. Got together and then Adam came into the picture and uh, we, we we turned the website into something profitable and usable and so um, that's how Howard uh, started helping me as my business partner. Um, but I also want to highlight something I always say: you never know when you put out the littlest thing where it might lead. You know, so people always self-edit. They say, "If I make a toolbox on the bandsaw, a typical little toolbox, <clears throat> who's going to see? Who cares? Right. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal toolbox." But on our website, I started making these CNC toolboxes. And then I said to myself, me and Howard and Adam put the packaging together, decided the price, look, the deal, how it's going to go. Uh, Aaron, of course, everybody knows Aaron was a huge part of the development of that, getting the right tolerances so that when the person at home can get it, it slides together well. And Adam, uh, Aaron also was, was helping in, uh, you know, what the yield, what we can get out of a sheet of plywood. And uh, then... To promote it, remember you guys said we need to make a video to promote to send people to the website. I'm like, well, if I just make a CNC toolbox, that's going to be boring. I have to hand make it. So I hand made it and then offered the plans and then offered the website link to people to go and buy that toolbox. Well, two days after that video went up, I got an email from somebody at Walmart. I've been a big fan of yours for a really long time. Shout out to Nikki. Been a big fan of yours for a long time. We really love this toolbox. Is this something you'd like to offer in Walmart? And it, it just blew my mind because Howard, remember when I sent that to you, you were like, I can't, I can't say what you said, but <laughs> you go, no way, no way. And so we didn't know where it was going to lead. We yeah. thought maybe it would be a conversation that it would go away only because, you know, these things are all very, it's, it's every one of these business deals is like, you're on the first date. You're on like the first blind date and you don't yeah. know where it's going to go. Yeah. It, it could, it could go to a second date, could go to a third date, then it dissolves. But you know, when we decided to to contact and follow up, 
we were on a very first date there and uh, the toolbox was the flagship thing. And, and like I said, it's really important to not self edit, especially when you, when you're a content creator and you're putting out so much content and you gotta, you gotta basically keep that shoot filled. And, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, we've been trying to do a video a week to mm -hmm. either promote the website or to just develop product, or I have obligations with advertisers. And then sometimes you put out a video that you don't think is going to do well. I think I even told you guys, no one's going to watch this video. It's because it's a bandsaw toolbox I made before. <laughs> and, uh, you know, now it's leading to what could potentially be the, you know, the biggest, uh, the biggest thing in all three of our lives, potentially, yeah. you know? Yeah. So Howard, did you want to say anything? Oh God, that's a, that's a hard thing to follow up on. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> beyond, I mean, it really is uh, for retail. It's like climbing Everest is what I tell people, right? right? Walmart is this big behemoth of a company and it's downright scary. I mean, that right. first conversation we had with Nikki, by the way, and if you're a maker, if you ever see Nikki, and I will not release her last name, you know, at one of these conventions or whatnot, you should step up and thank her, especially if you're trying to be an influencer or you're making pro uh, product or videos because she opened the door. Yeah, this single, this one person opened mm. the door and very enthusiastic her, and, and, and oh. like loves the YouTube videos and watches makers look really cool. Yeah. I mean, she, and she's a maker herself that I yeah. think one of the first things I, anyway, I don't want to belabor the fact, but please thank her because because yeah. of her, everyone, especially in the maker community, all of those ships are going to rise because yeah. of that one person. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so no, super exciting. Uh, you know, just trying to wrap our heads around. I mean, we sell a lot of stuff, right? And we sell a lot mm -hmm. of stuff on imake.com, on Duresta, jimmyderesta.com, but the Walmart numbers are just straight up frightening. Uh, yeah. And I don't mind sharing some of those numbers. We're, you know, I, we're our initial orders for 60,000 units. You yeah. know, uh, Jimmy has been selling, uh, you know, ice picks for, I don't know, what is it? Seven, eight years now? Give no, or take? Seven years, about six or seven years. Yeah. Six, seven years. In six or seven years, maybe 10,000 picks. We're right. going to do 60,000 in the mm -hmm. blink of an eye is right. what's going to be released. And so, uh, you know, out of the gate, it was, uh, you know, just trying to figure out the puzzle. We called people and maybe we could get into some of the, the details now of how we actually got this going. But um, yeah. I think our first initial, I just started sending samples. Well, it's funny. We I initially on our website, we were going to sell the toolbox in the yeah. frame. Yep. And we just realized shipping was too much. And then we right. were going to have a limited yield. We have to literally make every sheet of plywood have two by two foot squares and fit the whole product in that or in two pieces of that. Or one, I think it was one sheet piece of that. And then uh, we once we realized that we could just if we just gang up all the handles, all the sides, all the bottoms, all this, the, we'd realize that we would get a lot more yield out of the plywood, th therefore bringing the price down. And so we started looking at that. And then when we got involved with Walmart, we started going back to that original idea right. of how to package it. Do we want to package these? And then obviously they said toolbox is obviously a great mm -hmm. idea. Let's come up with others. And right. so I initially came up with like planters, birdhouses, this tray, and then, you know, Walmart kind of dictated the direction we went with those. And uh, after going back and forth, we ended up settling on the one foot by two foot, two yeah. layers, because what would fit on their shelf and, uh, you know, to keep it warm and fuzzy, we ended up going with like a, a craft brown paper with a drawing on it that one of Adam's uh, artists did. Some of Adam uses, did the hand drawing based on some of the sketches we were initially showing. So the drawing is also the instructions, which are very, very simple, obviously. Yeah, I just want, then, I want to give a shout out to Brian Forden if he's watching. Yeah, um, He was our designer. <laughs> Uh, yeah. through the process and just absolutely yeah. I, I think from from point jump you know he 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 totally hit it out of the park i, I think yeah. i was like well that's it that's it so you know we'll get to the packaging in a bit um from you know sharing a little bit about the process of 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 prototyping it up and then manufacturing um you know obviously jimmy was the the, the brains behind it and jimmy maybe just speak a little bit into kind of the, the toolbox itself as Mm -hmm. As in, in, a, in a world where, you know, we seem a little bit more kind of detached from, you know, the makerspace, maybe, you know, when, when, when we grew up in today's world. But, you know, 
what what was kind of the inspiration behind the toolbox as as a product and you know and as mm -hmm. as we do share this journey we'll be about a half an hour more or so throughout this process uh throughout this live but we're, we're really going to kind of unpack where we're where we went from um you know from concept to prototyping uh to manufacturing um and if you and if you didn't catch that a couple minutes ago it um you know there's more people on the live now but it's it's you know it's been a it's been a fantastic ride from going from just this concept to an email jimmy got on the shelves of walmart yeah. coming up shortly here um but the idea of the toolbox itself jimmy where did where did yeah. that come from well that, that of... iconic image of that kind of classic Carpenter's toolbox is, is harkens back to my grandfather had one and my dad had a couple of them. But the initial one that was from my grandfather has been kicking around. And uh, I always like that shape. It's it's just it's like a tote that won't collapse on itself. You know, I like bags and totes and stuff I've always carried. But the idea of just an open square box that you could throw your tools in, have your collection of tools as you know, especially as a kid, it's uh the concept is you get to build your own toolbox. I know as a, as a matter of uh, personal experience, my brother Joey was an airframe mechanic in high school. He learned airframe mechanic. Uh, he went to vocational school. And the very first project is everybody has to build their own toolbox. And that toolbox is the toolbox they're expected to use while they're students. And so that is sort of uh, the inspiration here for someone to buy this kit, make his own toolbox, a young child or or even an adult make this kit. That's why it's kind of it's kind of gender neutral. It's it's age neutral, I should say, and gender neutral as well. Anybody could buy this. You could make it your you know your gardening toolbox. You could make it you know your shoe polish for your shoe shine stuff. Because I know when I lived in the city, I used to shine my shoes when I was trying to be fancy. I always had everything in like a little wooden box or my shoe shine accessories. So you could use it for multiple things, not just any kind of tools, not just not just woodworking tools, but and. Uh, the idea that you build it yourself and you take, we take it down the road to 90% and it's up to you to finish that last 10% helps in a lot of things. It's, you know, uh -huh. it's, it is the experience of making the toolbox, which right. is really important and part of the whole process, but it, it helps us too in packaging it. We don't have to take it. We don't have to tumble the parts. We don't have to sand them. It's up to you as the end user to take it, cut it apart and assemble it. And uh, you know, so there's a lot of different things going on here and, uh, it's funny, Howard, we were trying to come up with a name. We didn't want to call it Duresta because we wanted to make it a little bit more warm and fuzzy. Sure. And, uh, the whole, everybody kept saying, oh, Jimmy's, Jimmy's workshop, Jimmy's workshop kind of as saying Jimmy's workshop, simply just to like describe what could be the name of the company, you know, like if we called it Jimmy's workshop, but you know, a better name than that. And then uh, Jimmy's workshop, but, but you know, like when we actually come up with the real name, but right. uh, you know, we'll put Jimmy's name workshop on here for now, but when we actually have a real name, we'll, we'll change that. <laughs> and then it got down to it. And I think it was really the it people at Walmart change. that, that liked it, that wanted to keep it. I mean, I, I forget even how it came to that point. Totally. And, and so maybe Howard speak to the idea. I mean, for anybody listening out there, who's, who's, um, you know, interested in the process of, of, of manufacturing and getting there. Right. Um, maybe could you unpack y maybe your story a little bit more in this in terms of, um, you know, how it's been, you know, working with Walmart and, uh, working with big box retail. And the second part of that question is the manufacturing side. And, you know, I wasn't heavily involved in that, but why, why not, um, overseas, you know, why here in North America? So the first part uh, again was, um, just, you know, working with, with retail, anybody who has a product or an idea, uh, maybe you could just share with the audience. your. Story. I just want to say one thing that when, after Howard, I had our first couple of meetings with Walmart and they said, okay, we're going to onboard you into our system. I took one look at the webpage and I said, Howard, this is where you step in. I said, this is the password. This is my email. This And Howard basically just took over. We had to actually do a handoff internally at Walmart so that Howard could be me inside of the Walmart website. And I completely stayed in the workshop. I stayed in Jimmy's workshop and Howard stayed in Howard's <laughs> office and dealt with all that con con complex onboarding, product insurance, all the complicated things, which is why Howard has a, a master's in business and I don't. <laughs> you don't, definitely don't need a master's in business for this stuff. I think a uh, simple uh, common sense and the willing to actually work and to uh, read a little bit. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it, it was, it is pretty scary, right? Anytime you get into something where um, 
I mean, again, it's Walmart. It, it just feels like every little step is momentous, which is great and terrible at the same time. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of pressure on yourself. But uh, no, I working with Walmart, listen, they are a big, big company for a reason. They have a lot of systems. They have a ton of literature in place. It is, they trust you mm -hmm. to actually go and put the effort, you know, to learn about them and their systems. And they have tremendous resources. But I could understand where it could be a little bit daunting or a lot daunting if you're not willing to jump in and scare yourself a little bit. Yeah. So I guess that was the first part of it. But luckily, I, I've had a couple of merchants there who, who worked with me. Uh, they're supremely patient. Uh, their replenishment manager, again, supremely patient. They want us to succeed. How great mm -hmm. is that, right? They yeah. want us to actually make some money and to and and, and not fall on our faces. So, uh, so that part of the equation has been straightforward. Um, uh, in terms of the manufacturing, that's that's uh, man. I mean, so interesting. So I, we have this we have this contract, right? I mean, we got 60,000 units. This is not a, I'm not going around shopping. Hey, you know, we're Jimmy DeResta. I make, uh, you know, we'd like to have 2000 made, which would be a huge number for us in any other scenario. Right. Right. But I would be, we, Jimmy and I really wanted to have this made in the U S right. So I'm calling factories. I'm calling plywood supply places, uh, woodworkers associations, people's uh, CNC places, factories, People would either not pick up my call or if they did, they would just brush me off. And I, I come out of the gate just guns a blazing saying, hey, I, I'm already working with Walmart here. I got the hard part done. Take my business and I'm willing mm -hmm. to share. I'm willing to pay a, a mm -hmm. premium so that we can make it in Walmart, uh, make it in the United States. You know, Jimmy and yeah. I felt very strongly about it. But let me tell you, two months into it, I'm starting to get nervous. Right. And Walmart's biggest concern with us was, I mean, they they really like Jimmy. They like me. They like the concept. But you realize I make and Jimmy DeResta consists of two people at that point. Right. Just myself and Jimmy. Yeah. Like they're like, so where's the rest of your team? And I'm like, well, I don't, <laughs> there is I'm no like, team. <laughs> you're looking at them, right. So uh, bless you. So. Anyway, so at that point, I that was a laugh. Start, that was a I, laugh. Oh, that's a laugh. I yeah. had to start looking at China, and I think there's a lot of comments. I've seen a ton of comments of of China. You know, why why didn't you make it in China? What are their pressures? Uh, by the way, we should, at some point, Adam, remind we got to talk about the negativity that's that's around there when when talking about Walmart, which I think is somewhat unwarranted, but I mean, mm -hmm. maybe it's I don't know. But for us, it hasn't been. Um, but anyway, China. So we started pricing it out there, and yeah, it's cheaper. But given the freight container prices, right? It went from uh, Pre-COVID, three thousand dollars for a, uh, for a container to come to U.S. It was quoting at twenty five thousand, and our stuff isn't small. Like you can't put, I think you can put only eight thousand units on a container, as opposed to how many iPhones you, do you think you could put on there, right? right. So you know, and, China, and then timeline. Plus, I have no control over them. China, you think Walmart's big? How big do you think China is, man? I right. mean, it's just gargantuan. And yeah, I've dealt to... with I've dealt with toy companies. I mean, I've been at I've been involved in toy manufacturing from 1990 until at least 2012 or 13. And you'd have a container of product that will quite literally fall off of a ship <laughs> because it's halfway across the Pacific. There's a typhoon and right. the boat rocks. And then they lost 30 containers to the bottom of the ocean. And yeah. then you get that phone call. You're like, yeah, that four months worth of production is gone. Sorry. Yeah. Insurance is going to handle it. But now you got to go back to Walmart and say, yeah, that, that, sorry. That, yeah, that's not going to happen, right? I mean, no, this is our one chance. This is literally one chance, right? So Jimmy and I agreed from the beginning, listen, we have this much profit to be made out of this. I'm pretty sure we're going to burn through all of it because our only goal here is to get the product to Walmart on time so right. that we get a second chance, right? right? That's the goal. This first yeah. batch of 60,000 is not a huge deal for Walmart, but it's a huge deal for us. I guess it's a huge deal for Walmart to say, you know what? Those two, those two guys actually came through. Maybe yeah, we, we should work with them again, right? So, you know, I, you know, profit was great, but we went into this saying we're going to just spend the money. And so, uh, you know, China was looking just okay. The numbers are good, but you know, there were too many uncertainties uh, given timing, and that was making me extremely nervous. And at that point, uh, you know, I mean, Adam has been working with us on the marketing side um, as a, you know, as a consultant, I guess, right? Uh, yep. 
a partner, if you will. And, you know, he, obviously we've been working for a year and a half together and we've, we've uh, enjoyed working together. And, but more importantly is he's competent at what he does. Right. And so, and has, you know, Adam, not to blow your ego off too high, but he, he thinks, and he's willing to do the work. So, <laughs> so, uh, it's so debatable. Right? that is the debatable statement. Right? So, you know, he and I, we talk a lot because, you know, this is just you know, looking at the team here, right. Between I'm talking to Jimmy all the time. I'm talking to Adam and, and, and a few other people who I'll name later, but, um, you know, Adam was like, well, why don't, how about, how about I throw my hat into the ring? And I was like, I'm all for it. Let's talk yeah, about we were, it. Actually, Howard and I were contemplating starting a factory here in East yep. Durham, yep, uh, yep, yep. which is still not out of the cards, but it was a concept. We were going to get uh we were going to basically use this order to seed somebody who was going to put up the money to start a factory Yeah. for yep. this order. And then right away, we were, it would force our hand to develop more product Correct. for other retailers. This is Correct. a one-year exclusive with Walmart, yep. but that's not going to stop us from thinking of stuff to send to anybody. Yeah. So anyway, so Adam, Adam uh, and I started ideating and then, you know, brought Jimmy into the mix. And I mean, you know what? I'm very, very, very happy to report relieved, a little bit surprised. Uh, well, maybe not so surprised, but we delivered to Walmart a few days ago. Um, and I, I'm, is, sur I'm surprised. I surprised. Say, I, I, I'm surprised. Even well, long I'm, story, long story. We're talking in code. Basically, Adam figured out all the manufacturing. Are you yeah. on British, um, on BC Island, right? Yeah, BC, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Victoria. Yeah, yeah. yeah Victoria. Yeah. So all the manufacturing is done in literally Adam's backyard. Yeah. yeah. He figured out, you had a friend that had a CNC factory that was somewhat dormant. No, not at all. No, I just started getting on the phone. And, you know, that's, that's kind of my contribution to this. I think it was a Monday, Howard. Howard's like, hey, Adam, like, you know, can, you want to take a run at 60,000 units? And I'm, I'm <laughs> it's just kind of an idiot sometimes. And I said, absolutely, man, let me take a run at it. And I got a buddy uh, who owns a construction company in town and reached out to him and you know, we just started making dials. And, you know, for me, if anybody's thinking about, you know, this process, and I think Howard and Jimmy would both attest to this, it, it, it's, if you're willing to take a bit of risk in terms of, um, you know, some capital investment, for sure, but also risk in terms of what you think you're capable of. I, I don't think, you know, I, there hasn't been a, a step or a layer in this process where I'm like, um, you know, that's unsolvable. And if you're just willing to solve the problems that are in front of you, there are people that want to solve those problems. You just got to connect with them. And I go back to that packaging, like the packaging, you know, if, for those of you, I see some comments in there. Um, if you want to check it out, there's links in the description below. That'll take you over to walmart.com. We're still waiting for the serving tray. That'll be the fourth one to get uh, greenlit on the .com. But the other three are up there. So you can check out the packaging there. And right away, it was like Brian Ford is going to handle that. And he stepped up to the plate manufacturer a couple of kilometers away from my house has stepped up to the plate maximum prototyping absolutely hit it out of the park and and you know it's you know 60,000 when you kind of are just talking about it uh, you know like, oh yeah we could do it 60,000 is a lot man like, a I'll lot. Tell you, how, how many sheets of plywood dude and I think the most we've ever ordered I think Jimmy you and I have the most we've ever ordered is like 50 sheets of plywood maybe 30 and that was recently right yeah. how many sheets how many sheets Adam I think a, a 8,000 sheets, I think <laughs> it was just, it's just, it's, it's just like crazy numbers, but you know, it's like, but then you just, you just make the phone call and it's like, I remember, <laughs> I remember the packaging alone. Here's a funny story. It's just like, are you willing to figure out problems? And if you're willing to figure out yeah. problems, yeah. um, you're going to figure them out because you don't actually have to figure them out. You have to let the experts figure them out. It's all yeah. about to connect the dots. Yeah. It's all it's just, about, I yeah, can I, can I, I think I told you this story, Howard. I remember uh, when we got our packaging delivered. So, you know, I was responsible to get the packaging um, source. We did that in uh, a great little box company, a great company in our province that's helped um, lift a lot of um, concepts like this. And, um, you know, he, he called me. He's like, hey, man, we're about to drop off the packaging. Where do you want it delivered? I'm like, oh, I'll just drop it off at my house. And he's like, at, at your house, man? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'm home. And he's like, Hey man, it's 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 sixteen pallets, and, <laughs> I'm like, and I'm like, oh okay, just a second, let me call you back. And it was just kind of like, you know, but it's as long as like, yeah, that's a huge problem. I don't have a house that can handle yeah. sixteen pallets. You have you know? a forklift? <laughs> uh, no, but I know somebody who does, and it's just like, okay, well, we need a forklift, like you know. And so then yeah. you go rent, you go, you know, we bought pallet jacks and yeah. whatever, and it's 
it's like there's people ready to solve those problems. You don't have to have it all figured out by any stretch of the imagination. And that's been the fun part yeah. is a, connecting those dots. It's a bunch of, I always tell people, yeah, if you look at it, if you look at any of these problems, right, you got to deliver 60,000 units. It could be overwhelming, but I think you and I talk about this a lot, Adam. It's just a bunch of one plus one equals twos. It's yeah, a lot it of simple steps, but there are a lot of them, right? And so, um, I mean, listen, I don't want to pat ourselves on the back too much uh, on the back too much here, but it, it's it's been it's been pretty cool. Um, I, I'll tell you one of the one of the great things about being able to have it made in Canada is uh, you know we were not and we could have done this in China as well, but again, it, it's tricky. You know, we didn't have to sacrifice on uh, quality either. Right. Yep. Remember, that was a big thing. You know, we, yeah, Jimmy trying to find this. plywood. The biggest problem mm -hmm. is trying to find the supply. Uh, you know, the plywood we were finding in China. A very really funny thing you start to figure out is that all the how at least the, the suppliers we were dealing with in China very early on initially were using plywood made in America. That's the messed up part, man. <laughs> it wasn't it, what we were making plywood here, sending it to China to be turned into product to be brought back to America. Mm -hmm. And we could not find the factory in America that wanted to use the plywood that was made here. Yeah, it's unbelievable, man. I, I would ask the Chinese factory, dude, where are you getting this plywood from? Because I can't get it anywhere. He he laughed at me and he goes, we're getting it from the States. <laughs> I'm like, which states? Like United States? I mean, because I can't <laughs> find it. And he's like, yeah, they manufacture it there. But I guess they buy it in such massive bulk, Quantity. right? They're buying literally like a million sheets of plywood at a right. clip, right? Right. So I, I, you know, so it's just not worth it. I mean, uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm super happy. We were able to keep it at a half inch, right? That this thing is like borderline indestructible. I mean, you've, you've tossed them around in your shop oh, yeah. uh, and I'm, and I'm super glad that it's not, listen, I have three kids and, you know, we've bought our fair amount of stuff from Walmart and target. And it, unfortunately, you know, some of the toy stuff is not great, right? It's basically disposable. But I like to, I love the fact that we have this product that once you assemble it with some glue, I mean, yeah. I mean the kid's yeah, gonna have it. It's basically an heirloom, man. Yeah. Right. And it's it's yeah. it's a good feeling. You know, um, talking talking about the product for a minute, like what I what I hope will happen, and and you know the Netflix show is coming out. Everybody talks about inspiring kids, and yeah. you know uh, I don't explicitly have to say we're doing to inspire kids because the kids because the kids love people all their energy to, to explicitly say this is why they're doing it i'm doing it to inspire everybody including kids and a lot of these projects a lot of the stuff you'll see on the netflix show is going to inspire young viewers and young yeah. people who will experience these products and they will remember the details just like i did when i was a little kid i remember seeing a saw do its job for the very first time and realizing, oh, okay, now I understand the teeth cut in that direction or or using sandpaper correctly for the first time. Oh, if I go like this, I'll get a splinter in my fingers. If I go like this, I won't. Yeah. You know, these little tiny things are the things that stick with you for the rest of your life, especially if you're a natural born maker. And this is what I hope will be a big part of this. You know, these are groundbreaking projects. They're not the most mm -hmm. groundbreaking dynamic designs in the world, but it's the experience of getting them cutting them apart, gluing them and personalizing them. It's an experience that gets you kind of started. And that's really what's really important about this is these craft projects will get you started. Whereas you wouldn't be able to really cut the shape out if you live in an apartment or if you, you know, you live in a small residential home, you don't have a band, so you don't have a CNC, but it'll get somebody started. And then a young kid might see this, a 10 year old might see this and be like, one day I'm going to have my own CNC machine. And then, then he gets into high school, he gets into a maker space. He remembers the experience of making this toolbox and realizing he always wanted it to be bigger. And so yeah. then he gets to that point and he has this and he makes it bigger or he, you know, he builds his own dream shop. He builds his mm -hmm. own workshop because yeah. he visualized himself inside this little barn or it becomes uh, you know, a bird expert because he played with this birdhouse and he actually had the experience of watching the birdhouse on his porch. Yeah. So, it's these little seeds that are being planted that I'm hoping will turn into, you know, other people's positive experiences, just like I've had. Yeah. I, these are, these are experiences that in the old days, I guess you would have with a parent who, you know, could use a hammer and nails and, and right. saw, uh, or, and if your parents could, didn't have the ability to do it, and at least in the United States, you had shop class, but yeah. there's no more shop class, at least, you know, Northeast here, that's just a way of, you know, that's just gone the way of the dodo bird. It's just gone. Yeah. And yeah. so, 
you know, on that's some why, level. That's I, why I have uh, YouTube. So <laughs> Shop Class is my YouTube channel. That's right. Me I and know. Bob and Dave and, you know. <laughs> Colin Furs and all, all, yeah. all the people around the world doing YouTube channels. That's yeah. the shop class for the young, youngsters. Hey, hey, all right. Yeah. You go yeah. ahead, Trey Hard. No, no, go ahead, you go ahead. All right. Well, I was just, well, I'm going to actually introduce uh, a couple questions from the audience, if sure. that's cool with you guys. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I, I just got to pull this guy in because I'm a fan of uh, his handle, Swedish Nuts. Uh, <laughs> and, it, you know, from, from uh, it, it's a great question, you know, and I, and I think we all kind of struggle with us on some extent, but I don't think you do, Jimmy. Oh, no, no, I give every, of- every idea I give away. I'm fully open source because the idea is really yeah. just a small part of it. You could have yeah. the most yeah. incredible, real patentable invention. People will look at it and go, wow, yeah. what a pain in the ass that must be to deal with. I'm yeah. not getting involved in that. It's really the experiences. It's the overall, it's this team. Yeah. It's like, yeah. cause I could tell somebody, Everybody's been making CNC. It's also it's this team. It's this it's the opportunities that are presented to you, because I spent so much time online, uh, you know, proving that I can be creative, that I can be counted on, that I'm dependable, that I'm follow through. Someone like Nikki at Walmart would see me and go, "Wow, this is this strikes a chord." I know I've been wanting to work with Jimmy for a long time. This strikes the chord. Yeah. Let's pull him in. So it's not necessarily about the toolbox. It's about the mm-hmm. overall experience that I've been presenting for many years and. These guys could steal all the ideas they want. It's the team that's going to make it. And it's not about the idea. It's more about the experience, the opportunities in the team and the camaraderie and everything. Obviously, it all manifests through these few products, but these products aren't as important as the overall picture. Make sense? Yeah. Can can I address that real quick as well? So a lot of people don't, obviously, most people don't know who I am, but I'm a serial entrepreneur and this is number 40. No, actually you guys, the rest is probably around 35 or 36, but I've done a lot of these. Right. And yeah. I, he, how, is- how it counts, how many businesses he started. So <laughs> it's like 36, 30, 40 is yeah. like the amount of businesses you started. <laughs> so this is the stuff I, I, this is my life. This is my passion. Uh, you know, I love, I love doing this. And one of the things I, I, you know, also enjoy doing, which Jimmy does as well as I love teaching people stuff. I'm an open book with all like with, almost all of my numbers, my procedures, uh, the way I do things. And I remember people would be like, why are you so open with your stuff? Like, aren't you afraid that they're going to literally open up a shop next door? I'm like, you yeah, know how much luck. work that takes? Do you have <laughs> any idea how much work they're going to try? And within two hours, most 99.9% of the population will just give be up. like, yeah, you know what? I don't want to give, I don't want to deal with it. And mm-hmm. if they are good enough, if they are good enough to open up a shop next to me, I want to encourage it. Grow, because when you grow just big enough, I'm going to buy you out and make you very rich, <laughs> and I'm going to be happy, and I'll have double the market share. That right. would be great. Right. Mm-hmm. They're growing. They're, other people Jeez. are growing are growing yeah. your business not yeah. knowing that it's going to be part of yours. It's Plus, funny. you want as many – I mean, the more players, the better as far as I'm concerned. It makes yeah. – dude, competition is fantastic. You know, right. you have – and you know what? Reach out to your competitors, mm-hmm. right? I used to co- reach out to – I would call them up. I would freak them out. They're like, why are you calling me? I'm, dude, I want to learn from you. You do a few things well. You could probably learn a few things from me. Let's be friendly. There's enough money for all of us. Yeah. Right. So anyway, that's a great question. Swedish nuts. <laughs> Miss Swedish. <laughs> or Mrs. Nuts. Yes. Or Miss. Uh, it's a great handle as well. Uh, yeah. This one too, it was on my list just to kind of bring up, um, you know, uh, you know, some things kind of where, where you know, where, where the, the idea that, um, you know, uh, we're not crossing the, the finish line, but we're about halfway through our production run, maybe three quarters. Um, you know, we're about 30,000 units in of the 60 and then, you know, hopefully ramping up for some more. I mean, that's the goal, but it's kind of like, okay, you know, the application of what we've learned so far. Um, so, you know, maybe Jimmy, I'll throw this to you first and Howard, mm-hmm. if you want to follow up, then, you know, what are some things you wish you knew at the start of this project that could kind of, you know, uh, help, the audience now who's who's maybe leaning on the fan it might not be you know an actual production run of a manufacturing product or starting or maybe just starting a business in general but you know this uh, specific product what are some things you wish you knew um i guess uh we we played around a lot with the size um i think we all thought the big two by two foot piece of wood would be the way to go Mm-hmm. Uh, ultimately, uh, some of the details it, it didn't suit the Walmart shelf. And so we had to kind of keep sizing it down, sizing it down, sizing it down. And um, 
So, uh, you know, we, we could have saved a couple of weeks, but it's not a big deal. It's just part of product development, you know, and then those other iterations will come into play if this is a successful line. You know, we yeah. could sell it in a two by two square. We have plenty of samples of that, you know, so uh, I, I, it's what it's hard to say because this this really unfolded so organically, so naturally. Mm-hmm. And I've been developing products for so many years. I know, Adam, you've been developing the Maker Mob, which a lot of it applies to everyday products in general. And Howard, you've been dealing products your whole life. So I, I we we the three of us came together in this with multiple years, like literally probably 50 to 60 years worth of experience yeah. of developing and marketing product, whether it be visual product, physical product, or or web product. And it's all basically the same. Mm-hmm. And that's a great segue, if you don't mind, right? Nope. My wife, <laughs> my wife, who's my partner, uh, is always, always is quick to remind us, you know, us that, you know, we can basically do anything. Like we really don't need anyone. We can right. do anything as long the youth, YouTube is fantastic. Resources, fantastic. You just got to go through the steps. It's because, you know, what I, what I, you know, every business is basically the same. Right. You start with step one and you move forward and and, and, and just and, and keep moving forward from there. And so the thing I wish I knew from the start of this project that I wish I could go back on is if I could do it over again, I would not call anyone that knew anything about Walmart. Right. Not one person. I would I would bypass. I spent probably six to eight weeks on that. That was and I, don't, I make the same freaking mistake every single time. I don't think I know enough. There are experts out there. I should, right. no, 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 dude, just pick up the freaking phone, call Walmart directly. You have a, a, a line right into the main artery, right? Yeah. I have access to literally every merchant in Walmart with a phone call. Just call right. them. They're mm-hmm. going to give you the answer or email them. And then just, and if they don't, there's, you know, there's something called. I'd like to, I'd like to say something funny. You know, me and Howard have a great relationship. I'm the wacky artist that doesn't like to read emails. I tell everybody, if you can't fit everything you want to tell me in the title of the email, don't send me the email. (laughs) (laughs) But Howard, (laughs) and, and Howard is, is a businessman and, and loves numbers and spreadsheets and all that stuff. And, Howard, it's funny because you, 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 Howard has a whole network of business, MBA business associates that he graduated with, friends, clubs that you were a sure. part of. Yeah. And every time you, you would tell, I'm talking for you, but you would yeah. tell people, I'm working with this YouTuber. And they're like, what? YouTuber? What is he? A makeup artist? <laughs> and you'd have to sit there and explain to them. And then, and, uh, and they would all be like, oh, so how's it going with that YouTube guy? You know, he's still selling <laughs> hats and t shirts. And then you go, oh, yeah, we're, we're selling product to Walmart. And then they would like drop their glass and go, how did you get into Walmart? You're right. I mean, and yeah. there's that and a couple of other stuff too that we that we got yeah. going on behind the scenes. But yeah. it's funny when you always tell me this yeah. guy, that guy who was always kind of poo-pooing you, like wasting time with me. And then suddenly they're like, you hear the record, the needle lift off the record when you drop the oh yeah, we're selling products into Walmart. It's crazy, what? right? By the way, you no. know what it just dawned on me is you know, it's six I think you and I have been working six years together now, give or take. Yeah. And yeah. we've had a lot of different, by the way, this is not the only thing that Jimmy and I have worked on. Oh, so, of course. You know, we have this like, I mean, six years worth of history of just, yeah. you know, I mean, we've one had thing, a lot of, yeah. One thing I tell everybody, I, Howard, when, when you first came to me, we met through through Danny, Danny uh, Aviv, my my good friend who's the teacher. Uh, Danny a, a introduced you and I, and then, you know, you got to know me, you started looking at my YouTube channel about six or seven years ago. And then you said, uh, what are you not taking advantage of? And he saw, you saw, like, I had so much, like, I had all this, like, debris around me that I wasn't (laughs) making money on because I'm just busy focusing on the next video. And you're like, well, look around your shop. What are you not taking advantage of right now? I go, oh, I don't know. Somebody gave me a free welder. And you're like, who? I go, "Uh, oh, Lincoln Electric gave me a free welder. And you're like, who's the guy that gave it to you? I go, oh, Craig. He goes, give me his phone number. (laughs) A week later, I had to deal with Lincoln because of you. And so, and then ultimately I, I rolled that deal into my agent. And then I've been working with Lincoln Electric simply because you looked at me and said, what are you not taking advantage of yeah. in this room? There's so much junk laying around. Dude. Is, what what clients are you not taking advantage of? I remember telling you, I'm sorry. I remember this line. I, I think I told you within the first meeting, you are the worst run business I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> There's so much money on the table here, but it is yeah. unbelievable. You're like you're there's money everywhere. You're just refusing to pick it up. 
Right. Well, because um, so that means phone calls and you know emails that don't fit in the title of the email. I have to read stuff. That's okay. Like- that's Adam. Shall we get back on point here? <laughs> uh, sure. We'll di- we'll dial it back in. And next question is coming in from a uh, 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 Brock, <clears throat> and I think we've we talked about this briefly before, but it, it warrants um, kind of Jimmy your your input on this as well. You know, as a builder, much like um, much like your style of building, but how did you bridge the gap into technology uh, going from Hands-on to computer screen seems to be the hardest for me. And and I know that you've spent a lot of time, uh, yep. Jimmy, in particular. Um, well, you know, uh, it's funny. I've, I've definitely – I had I had trouble with the learning curve, no doubt. I mean, the most important resource that we all have is YouTube and other makers. You know, I, uh-huh. Derek from Alden is constantly – unpacking and figuring out. I watched Derek go from not using a computer for technology, you know, involving manufacturing at all. Now he knows more than me because he spends so much time trying to unpack and 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 solve puzzles that come across his CNC. I, I think really you just got to take that first step. And when I bought my first CNC machine in 2013, I had no money. I literally was living paycheck to paycheck. And uh, I, I knew I had a lot of credit on credit cards. So I just laid down $7,500 and I had a CNC machine delivered. I opened the box and I was it was like staring at me like a growling monster. I had no idea what to do with it. I was like, I just wasted 7,500 bucks. Now I got a, now I have another payment to deal with. But I started to really figure it out slowly, but surely determined, determinedly. Is that a word? Determined to figure it out. It is now, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and <laughs> that's, you really just got to confront these issues and, you know, your best resource is other makers. And, you know, in this mm-hmm. business, you're going to have a hard time not finding somebody to help you that's going to be willing to share the knowledge. You know, you might find someone that wants you to pay a consulting fee. Just move on to the next person because there's so many people willing to share this information for free. Yeah. Yeah. So if I, not, I think- spend, find a makerspace, spend some time with somebody that does it. And, you know, you really got to confront these issues. I know I still struggle with it. I mean, I, I, I have a really hard time dealing with, um, you know, dealing with, uh, the Fusion 360, you know, when, when I have a specific project, I muddle my way through it, you know, and again, I have lots of resources and people I could talk to, but, uh, you know, it still doesn't come to me naturally as much as Illustrator, Photoshop, and, you know, the other programs I've been learning for more than 20 something years now. Uh, I got to bring this one in just cause I think it's funny. Um, you go ahead and go ahead and read that Howard. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You know, uh, it's, well, it's, Howard, I think I keep it kind of easy. I just say yes to everything, do. and I go, "Yeah, you, you, does. Do it. <laughs> you do say yes to everything. You do say yes to everything. You are the first human. Uh, I mean, I usually deal with products, you know, or or, or corporations or companies, right? And so, you know, Jimmy is listen. Jimmy is an artist. He truly is an artist in every in every way. And uh, you know, for me, you know, I get to hang out with the cool kids a little bit now, right? Yeah. So that's that's been really fun. I get to, uh, you know, I I had a you know, I had a make, I had a YouTube channel for a little bit, and that was as I was starting to uh, work with Jimmy. I always tell people, no matter which business I get into, I always I always learn something about it. I physically do it. You know, when I first opened a restaurant, I I chopped the chicken, I counted the cash, I cleaned the bathrooms. Because mm-hmm. until you do it yourself, yeah. how are you going to really advise someone like truly and understand yeah. what they're going through? You know, um, but you know, I. And and having that a little bit of an experience, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Jackman, uh, you know, went a long way f- towards me understanding. I think if I didn't do that, it would be a lot, lot more difficult. But at the same time, uh, yeah, I mean, it hasn't been perfect, but you know, I mean, Jimmy, right? I mean, it's been it's been a good ride so far. Yeah, no, it's been you know very you know like we probably could have made more money faster this way or that way, but you know, it's it's just you have lots of things to do. I have lots of things to do. Yeah. And, you know, Adam's working on Maker Mob and, you know, keeping all the various tentacles of Maker Mob going. And uh, this, like I said, this came along very naturally. And then this is going to open a lot of other doors, which is great. And, uh, you know, yeah. it's, that's that's the one thing I think is really important is like these opportunities come through. And I remember, you know, I could talk about Paul Jackman, Paul, Paul and I and the other guys were, you know, negotiating. Do we want to do this show? Do you know this when we did the TV show? Paul's on the TV show with me. Yeah. Do we want to do this Netflix show? I don't know. Is we're going to have to sacrifice several months, and you know, we're not going to really get paid what we deserve. This, that, and the other thing. But you know, it's an opportunity that's going to lead to other opportunities, no doubt. You know, big and small. So, yeah. By the way, we're still like right now, I, I, because of the Walmart deal, we have. I mean. Listen, we're 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 
hopeful realist, right? Like Walmart, the odds of it truly succeeding, right? They're not huge, all right? Let's call right. a spade a spade here. But we get all of this experience, right? And and one of your best lines, Jimmy, right? What if everything goes right? In which right, case, right. then we're going to talk <laughs> yeah, about yeah. some crazy stuff, right? Yeah. But, you know, even from just this, you know, this experience alone, we, you know, we've already, uh, you know, there's a, a, a glue company that we're speaking to. Uh, who you'll see their 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 sticker. You know why not? Let's call them out. It's Typhon, right? They're, yeah, we we put their stickers on, and uh, you know we put it uh, on onto the packaging, and you know we're talking about doing some more business together. I mean, we would never ever yeah have that relationship, no matter how much it makes sense, right? For God's sakes, you're you're yeah Jimmy, the rest of the the, the maker. Typhon should have been calling you years ago, but mm -hmm. for whatever reason, and they're fans on top of that. Right. Mm -hmm. But because of Walmart, it just helps create that natural connection. And it's, and it's great. It yeah. Yeah. This person says, uh, from what I'm hearing, the biggest part of this is networking side, knowing someone who knows someone who has heard something about somebody else. It's absolutely <laughs> yeah, but, true. And that's why mm -hmm. you got to go to shows. You got to get out of the house. You got to, you know, go online, get involved in conversations. Me, Bob and Dave met, our podcast going on seven years now. We met in a chat on Facebook. We met in the conversations yeah. on Facebook. You know, we didn't know each other. You know, you really got to now, you know, Bob has such a, a network of things that I can learn from. And so does Dave and vice versa. And it's really important to just, you got to, you got to put out to receive and regardless of what it is, you know, you got to, you got to just get in there to get back, whether it's getting online, whether it's going to, you know, we're going to go to Maker Central in, in England in a couple of months. We're going to WorkbenchCon next week. You know, you got to go to these things and get involved. It's really mm -hmm. important. I mean, I've seen people at the very first WorkbenchCon four years mm -hmm. ago or five years ago, and they, they have a whole new business now because they started to get involved with the community. You know, whether it's this community or any community, you really need to just get involved. You're not going to be able to network by staying, you know, insular. Yeah, I'll just draft off that and I'll, I'll field one more question here. It's more of a comment uh, when we wrap it up. We're about 45 minutes in here. And, and, and don't neglect those relationships either. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, if somebody reaches out to you and there's an opportunity. It's like, you know, it's like, well, can I or can't I or whatever? You know, I've, I've found that or you get an email and you're like, oh, I should probably answer that, but I don't have time. And it's like, you know, do the things you can do yeah. and yeah. that are in front of you. And if you, if you have a tendency to neglect those things, uh, they just snowball. You know, and you kind of end up on an island and, and you know, and like even back to the first question, I think we posed about Jimmy, about trusting other people with your ideas and your concept. Do it. I mean, you know, it's it's far more likely something better <laughs> is going to happen than, you know, something yeah. negative. It's just more likely because most people aren't douchebags, you know, like if they're not. From it's my funny. I could, I could tell you a funny story. Uh, I probably said this publicly somewhere, but. Howard, when I introduce you to Adam, you go, Should, who is this guy? Can we trust him? Oh, he's Canadian. We can trust him. <laughs> <laughs> I go, yeah, he seems like a nice guy. He's Canadian. I'm sure he's, oh, never yeah. been, he's probably never told a lie in his life. I go, no, oh. I never have. Canadians don't do that. <laughs> That, that was, was really? That, that was how we vetted you, Adam, when we first okay. met you. All right, very, I'll take it, man. Very Whatever. detailed. Uh, very I'm going to post, I'm gonna post this question. I appreciate that. Canada appreciates that. Uh, last but not least, Jimmy, uh, you made me realize that I'm a maker. Nice. Oh, um, that's great. That's really you sweet. Know, I, I have the comments on the side here, and this is uh, constantly coming up. Uh, and, you know, it's, uh, I just think you need to hear that. You know, again, we're Thank not you. trying to, you know, boost your ego or anything like that. But what you do inspires people. Thank you. And, you know, and I know, and I know firsthand that the idea behind Jimmy's workshop was to do just that, you know, yeah. whether it was kids or adults or just get out there and start making, you know, get, get, get that rite of passage uh, project under your belt, um, you know, and just, and it, it inspires a community and, and, you know, and, and, and this is a fantastic community to be a part of. And, you know, as we kind of wrap it up here, you know, um, you know, Howard, uh, if you want to give your, you know, your final last words and Jimmy will give you the hammer and then we'll kind of sign off. But yeah. um, I, from my perspective, having worked with you for a few years, you know, that comment right there, it's it's and people know. I mean, the comments are full of this. I mean, that's that's been my Thank experience you. from jump and it continues to be that to this day. So, you know, that's where I'll end it. But Howard, if you want to kind of speak sure. um, your final remarks yeah. as we wrap up and Jimmy will give you the hammer. Yeah, uh, you know what? I me, it's just a bunch of thank yous. I mean, in this past year, uh, 
you know, it's not just myself and Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, we are the the corporate face, if you will, when when dealing with these companies. But uh, you know, obviously, Adam, you know, thank you, um, uh, Brian, thank you, mm -hmm. um, Aaron. I mean, yeah. he like. I had to call Aaron a lot, a lot, especially yeah. when you were busy with the show and he's yeah. also busy with it, but I'm like, dude, I don't care what you're doing. And he would, he would find a way to make it happen for me. Yeah. Um, we Aaron have provided so a lot of the samples as we went. I would just yeah. give him some instruction and he would yeah. make it happen. Yeah. Those early days. I mean, those are like, like, those are very time sensitive. Like you got to get the FedEx like immediately. I have a days. Yeah. Uh, just Scott, Scott, who's in the back, who's yeah. hot and or shipping and ha shipping and handling. I mean, these are all individuals that take stuff off of our plate. And without it, we can't focus on the stuff that we need to do. Uh, yeah. You know, there's Ray, uh, who's been a, a recent, uh, you know, addition to our team, who has, who speaks Walmart and can speak Arkansas. Uh, right. And I'm supremely, supremely grateful. Uh, without her, I would be, I wouldn't be on this, I wouldn't <laughs> be on this right now. I'd be buried in a computer, uh, <laughs> working my butt off. Um, Patrick, you know, I mean, Rob, I mean, you know, Rob taking up all the slack, uh, you know, that, uh, Rob you know, that, yeah, that needed to be picked up. And I've never even met Rob. I just heard of him so many times. I've seen him on. He just the, walked through the back. Oh, did he really? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just adopted him. He's my, my new son, my only son. And, uh, again, I can't, I can't stress this enough. I'm still overwhelmed by the fact that Nikki emailed you. I yes. cannot believe it. It's been a year. It hasn't been a year. We just said it was March, March 7th 8. or so. Yeah, March, March 8th, 8th, right? March 8th, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and she, you know what? Because of her, from it took literally 10 days, 10 days to get the Walmart deal papered, done, mm -hmm. under contract. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, uh, I mean, who does that? Mm -hmm. She did. Howard, are you, are you soliciting advice from the maker community? Am I soliciting advice from the maker community? <laughs> If I had friends that wanted to just consult with you for a few minutes at a time here or there. Oh, of course. They're, they're always welcome, Tiff. They're always <laughs> welcome. I don't know if you're joking or not, but 100%. I'll fill throughout the cycles. Don't worry. No, no. <laughs> I'm always, always available. I'll tell you, the maker community, uh, it just feels good. I just, man, it, it really feels. Listen, you know what? The banking has its role in life. Legal has its role in life. Um you know, everyone has their place, but something about the maker community, it's just very clean, simple. Um, you know, our toolbox, I mean, seriously, I mean, it's just, you just feel good. You just <laughs> literally feel, you're like, oh my God, I actually made this thing and it's not going to fall apart. Right. I don't know yeah. how else to really verbalize it. Howard, before you made the toolbox, did you ever make anything before that? <laughs> Dude. Can you not embarrass me? Next. <laughs> no, Howard, Howard, Howard has been in the bicycle business for many years. He completely understands bicycles and the mechanics of bicycles and riding them and falling off of them and breaking limbs from them. Do, do you want years. to know something though? Watch. As yeah. I'm I'm a decent, one of my best friends had this great quote about me, uh, you know, description of me. Howard gets to mediocrity faster than anyone I know. So <laughs> I can <laughs> learn stuff <laughs> quickly. But I, I plateau out at right. plateau out at literally just mediocre, right? And same thing in the bike store. You know, I none of my guys will let me really work on bikes because they're like, dude, you're okay, but we're the professionals. Let us do it. <laughs> I just make them better, right? I just try to make their lives easier. So All right. anyway. Uh, so Bliss made furniture. Howard, you're getting a call from me. So get ready. <laughs> Uh, uh, I will, uh, you know, you got the hammer, uh, here, Jimmy, uh, where, yeah. where do you see kind of, um, you know, Jimmy's workshop headed? Well, Jimmy's, you know, Jimmy's workshop is for? now, yeah. Jimmy's workshop is now basically the toy craft, uh, company that we started and this is the first product and hopefully we were able to turn this into, uh, a, a toy company where like. I'm trying to remember some of the things I played with as a kid, you know, like, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank, but you know, some, I'm, cause I can't remember any of the brand names, but I remember mm -hmm. having a, my own little wooden toolbox with like a bunch of little tools in it. And, and I thought to myself, all these tools are so useless, but they're cute. You know, I, like, I'd like to make a toolbox one day that has like real legitimate tools that you could actually get your hurt on. You know, now there's, there's so many different requirements, but uh, I wouldn't want to sell tools that people get hurt with specifically, but tools that actually do real work, you yeah. know, stuff like that. And um, 
So where this is going to go, it, it time will only tell, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And, uh, you know, with the support of the community and, you know, I've heard so many really wonderful comments and people are so excited that, uh, you know, we have this opportunity. So it's just nice that, you know, we support each other. And, and I just want to say thank you to so many kind words that I've been hearing, you know, direct text messages, direct DMs. And, you know, today, uh, Elvis Woodwork got his his uh his stuff my buddy austin he got his uh his product in the mail from walmart which is so exciting to see it in somebody else's shop yeah he sent me a picture yeah, the first cool. thing i was thinking was like where is that that's not my shop because <laughs> yeah. it's not in my shop finally yeah. it's out in the world so that's wow. also that's the very first picture i got from somebody that wasn't me howard or adam so very cool so yeah. uh you know if you're looking for those if, if you know the links i think are in the description below uh on the video uh, and what if everything goes right? You know, I think that's kind of been the vibe of this, um, yeah. you know, kind of sharing, you know, Jimmy's road to retail um, and just, you know, realizing that people are genuinely good and want to help. You know, yeah. I think holding everything to yourself because you want it to be perfect or whatever. I mean, it's just such a roadblock. And yeah. so, you know, that's what's inspired me uh, hanging with you guys for the last 45, 50 minutes. Um, right. And hopefully you've been inspired as well. Uh, watching along. So Jimmy, thanks for letting us hijack your channel for uh, this uh, presentation. Howard, thank you, guys. Um, thank you as always. It's been a blessing connecting with you again. And uh, here's what's upcoming. I think um, the video is probably coming out Sunday, I think. Yep. On that the picture channel. was taken about one hour ago. Yep. Okay. So that's going to get released uh, Sunday on Jimmy's channel right here. Make sure you check that out. And, um, you know, Dave, Dave Beamer, what if everything does go right? You know, that's thanks, Dave. fantastic. Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to sign off here. Uh, Howard, thanks again. Jimmy, as always. Thank you. Um, and thank, thank you, you all for thank watching. You. Thanks so much. Take care. How do I hang up? Uh, I'll take care of that for you, man. <laughs> right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you.